Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, yeah, I'm taking a long hiatus from uh, doing videos, um, about at least two months, I think. But uh, we got the X-Men creative teams announced, and so, I mean, how could I not, right? So I'm breaking uh, my, my brief hiatus here to actually dive into what Marvel's finally unveiling, of lifting up the curtain, whatever else it happens to be around from the ashes, a new beginning. And there's been a lot of takes on this already, and I know there's a lot of videos out there. What's interesting is there's kind of a uh, two very different groups disliking it for two very different reasons. So one, the traditional probably channels, uh, if you're listening to this channel, probably, you know, you listen to some of these other channels, they've kind of written this off as being uh, pretty crappy uh, out the gate and, uh, and, uh, and disappointing. And then the other uh, half of the world are the people who really like the Krakoa era and just uh, really dislike the fact that we're going into something that feels a little bit more superhero-y and a lot less uh, island orgy-y, uh, if that's even a word. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, Tom Brevoort made a comment of like, why are more people talking about the trailer? I, I don't know, because South by Southwest is a weird place to announce something for comics. It, it shouldn't be, but it just is. And, uh, and people are tired of, of relaunches. Unfortunately, it just doesn't have the impact for what it's worth. And a lot of people in memory hold this. When Jonathan Hickman was announced on X-Men, uh, that it got some attention. I mean, people were kind of happy about it, but the buzz really kicked in after House of X Powers of 10 started coming out. And that's when the buzz really began. Even though Hickman was coming off of a pretty, pretty monumental kind of Avenger Secret Wars run, um, I mean, a couple years in the past, yes, but even though that was uh, that was a big deal at the time, um, it wasn't. It, it didn't give huge buzz out the gate. Comics fans are a lot more put up and shut up than they used to be, and the idea of uh, dropping a trailer, or a teaser image, and everybody's going to get super horny for it, those days are over. But anyway, let's let's go through the news, um, which you've heard other places, but I want to give you my take on it, and um, I'm going to give you kind of a you know a different take. Um, when I say to partake, you know, there's the personal me perch uh, fan side of things. Of I, I don't get excited by these. It feels very much uh, like kind of the X-Men status quo when they were living on the uh, island off the coast of San Francisco. And then we had the, you know, the, the kind of the various eras of the time displaced X-Men. And then Wolverine was a headmaster and all that. It has that same kind of vibe to it. And I'm just not uh, excited about that. But anyway. Uh, three major X-Men books, and then six more books uh, behind that. And from what I understand, there's at least another three you know, waiting in the wings behind that. Uh, but let's get into it. There's The three big X-Men books are X-Men by Jed McKay and Ryan Stegman. Uh, we've got uh, The Exceptional X-Men uh, by Eve Ewing and Carmen Canero. And we have Uncanny X-Men by Gail Simone and uh, it's uh, Marquez. I'm assuming they mean uh, David Marquez. Yeah, David Marquez here. Weirdly, I, I assumed it was David Marquez. And I was looking at a couple other uh, preview images and they, they left off the David. It's like, is he, is, he going, is he doing a Madonna thing now? Anyway, David Marquez. So here's my take on the three books, um, if you will. I'm just kind of laying out my biases. It's popular, you know, first on Uncanny X-Men, you've got Jubilee, you've got uh, Rogue and Gambit uh, co-leading the team, and uh, Wolverine and Nightcrawler are in this book. For what it's worth, with all the, the women are taken over, an all-female version of the X-Men, it's uh, three dudes, two women, uh, last I checked, unless they're going to do something radically different with Wolverine, Nightcrawler, or Gambit. Um, but uh, it's, it's popular to hate on Gail Simone, and uh, she's... She's kind of steered into that. Um, so what I'm about to say is certainly not part of that group. Um, I was not a fan of her Batgirl work. And uh, The Secret Six and those, those titles she's done, I've never been a big Gail Simone fan. Uh, others have. It's, it's a style of writing that works for some. It just it, it, it always feels kind of like Joss Whedon light to me. I, I, I don't know. I just It never clicked for me. I recognize that there's a story there. I recognize there's a structure there. And I'm not saying, oh, she's a shit writer. Ah, oh, fuck her. I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying it, it just, the, the tone and the way it's written, just not my cup of tea. That's all. Um, David Marquez, I mean, you, you want to hope that he's going to be on the title for more than three issues, but it kind of feels like if he's on that book, you know, on issue seven, I will be shocked and fall out of my chair, but, uh, but hopefully so. 
Um, a lot of, by the way, articles are talking about how this is a big 90s throwback. Um, I think I think that's a, a very bad mental... <laughs> I, I don't think this is a 90s throwback by any stretch of imagination, but, but okay. Um, anyway, so you've got this team. This is kind of the classic X team. Um, five people on it. Okay, it's uh, reasonably... Here's the part that's that's goofy about it. The team are going to operate out of New Orleans. So, I mean, all right, but I'm, I'm picturing a lot of kind of painful um, attempts to make it look like it's in New Orleans. I, I, I it, it, People get cutesy with the location, which is also the problem with uh, Jed McKay. And, and the Jed McKay Stegman book, I think I have more uh, concerns with, even though I'm not a Gil Simone fan. Uh, first off, as I mentioned in another video, because I'd, I'd heard this was coming, uh, Jed McKay on both the Avengers book and the X-Men book, and this looks to be the the big book, like the centerpiece book. Um, I think that is dumb as hell. Um, he's also on Doctor Strange. He's also doing the Bloodstorm event. He's also doing uh, Moon Knight. I think this is how you both, A, expose you haven't cultivated good writing talent within your own company, and two, it just, that, that just seems dumb to me. To uh, to be doing, I like I, I I think it's absolutely insane to have him on both books. Presumably he'll go off one of them, maybe Avengers. I, I guess I like I, I don't know, but uh, this is this is bad for talent. Just full 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 stop. Anyway, this book uh, features uh, a, a team led by uh, Cyclops and Magneto. Magneto will be in a wheelchair for some reason, and he will be called Professor M. Okay, um, the Beast, which is uh, the the recently cloned, revived Beast, not the the evil Beast. I don't know if evil Beast still out there, or presumably he's getting killed in the X Force, or who knows where they're going. We get Psylocke, and uh, this is looks like uh, Psylocke, Psylocke, not Captain Britain, Betsy Braddock version. We have Kid Omega, who presumably is going to get his head back attached to the rest of his body. Um, Oya. Uh, who has been in uh, the Sabretooth series, and uh, she's going to be called Temper now, okay, um, and uh, Magic and Juggernaut. And they're going to be operating out of Alaska. And once again, like, the locations are too cutesy for me. I, I don't, I mean, I, 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 again, I'm a fan of the time when they were in Australia. Um, I, I realize I'm a hypocrite by, you know, picking on this stuff now, but we've got a team in New Orleans and a team in Alaska and it just, I, I get it, it, it just, it, it feels like Marvel's going to want to be cute with this. I don't know, I guess you have a teleporter on the team. What does it really matter? You, yeah, I mean, on both teams, so okay. But then we get to the third book. And the third book is E-Viewing and Canero's Exceptional X-Men. This will be based out of Chicago. And uh, Kitty Pride or Kate Pride has decided to go back to Chicago, give up this whole mutant stuff, and be a barista. Uh, which is, you know, it, that is the paycheck up from comic book work, but that's fine. Um, but anyway, she comes across uh, New Mutants, Bronze, Oxo, and Melee, and uh, somehow teams up with, with uh, Emma Frost, who's, I guess, going to slum it to live in Chicago, and they're going to train mutants. This is the Gen X book, or the New Mutants of, of this, the series. We get these three new characters. Looks fairly generic. Uh, we'll learn more about kind of who they are and kind of what they're doing. But th this book is the one that this, I, I think is going to dearly struggle uh, in sales. But by the way, if, if you, um, as Kate Bright has recently done in X-Men, you, you just went off and murdered a crap ton of people. And now you are, um, apparently you are uh, a barista. Like there's no background shy. Like, like how is like, at, at some point, by the way, the Avengers are going to meet up with the X-Men in fact, you're already seeing it a little bit in the recent Jed McKay Avengers book. You got Captain America, Iron Man, like, you know, we really got to get in there and help against Orcus. It's like, do you realize that your buddies, the X-Men, like the X-Men are our friends. Do you realize they're murdering people like crazy? They're, they're just, they're murdering people left and right. Is Captain America like, well, they're fascists, so fuck them. I mean, I, I'm seriously, what, how do you reconcile that? Anyway, um, of the three books, I mean, the, the X-Men book by McKay is the one that's positioned to do the best um, as a core X-Men book. The Uncanny X-Men, if it's going for kind of classic feels, you know, you got Wolverine, or Wolverine, Gambit, Rogue, 
Jubilee Nightcrawler. So there's a lot of kind of classic bands can go with on that one. I think that that's um, it, the problem is is Gail Simone going to write it like like she writes other stuff. I think that's going to be the, the trick. And the X-Men by McKay is going to be a more classic action book. The status quo for all this, by the way, is that, you know, they have to, uh, they're, you know, they're once again fighting uh, those who hate and fear them. And because of everything that would happen with the mutants and Orcus and all the rest, and presumably they're murder spree, I, I don't know, or the timeline gets reset or what, whatever, um, they are hated you know, hated around the world and they're despised for mutants and everything that they've done. And I mean, why not? They've been global drug dealers who uh, kill people like left and right. So apparently that's the status quo. Okay. It feels like, um, man, if you're Hickman, you just got to be pissed that this is where it all works. First, you know, with the people who came in to write with you and then that this, this reboot is happening. Oh, well, whatever. Um, there's uh, six more books and I've heard a couple others floated by, but we're getting Phoenix Storm and Wolverine. Uh, Wolverine supposedly is uh, the Greg Capullo, Saladin Ahmed a book, but uh, we'll see how that, that floats out. Um, X-Force, X-Factor, and NYX. NYX, of course, kind of the lesser known book from a long time ago that eventually uh, introduced uh, Laura Kinney, and I'm assuming she's going to head back there. Uh, but anyway, so we have uh, you know X-Men, Uncanny X-Men, Exceptional X-Men, Phoenix, X-Factor, Storm, New, NYX, X-Force, and Wolverine all starting uh, summer of 2024. They're not all nine going to launch simultaneously, but by the time you get to the fall, we should have nine books rolling. So it's about 40 to $45 and change. I, you know, I, I, there's a couple of these at risk. You know, Wolverine obviously is going to do fine. Um, of the three main titles, this uh, exceptional X-Men is going to bomb and bomb hard. Um you know, Phoenix and Storm both as solo books, you got to do something that's really, I mean, what does a Jean Grey solo book look like? Um, did she out kind of find herself? Like, I, I don't know. That that feels like a, a book that doesn't do very well. And Storm, the Storm's a character I do love. Um, but as a solo book, it just, it, it they can never seem to get it right. They immediately want to steer into like, let's go ex explore my African roots for the 900th time. And in, you don't get her doing badass stuff. You get her just, I am a goddess and she'll, she'll do some storms and, and it will rain and like some, you know, like street bandits be like, oh shit, we got to get out of here. But it's like, you know what? Send her up against Dr. Doom or Ultron. If you, if you give her something major to do, that's how you get that character over. Um, X Factor, you know, be wonderful if that was a revival that had Madrox leading a team. That would be great. We'll see. X Force, uh, who knows what that's going to be this time around. And NYX, again, I, I, you know, street level mutants in New York. I, anyway, I've heard of a couple more that apparently we're going to get uh, announcements with in a couple months. But that's what we got. Um, so that's my take on it. I, I don't think this relaunch is amazing. I think it will be nice to get them off of the Krakoa nothing was happening period. Um, it is interesting how Marvel's got themselves into a jam where, you know, they're, the fans that they have cultivated over the last four years or so are pissed. And the new fans are not exactly being won over with this, but we'll see how it all works out. Question is, are you buying this? Are you going in on this? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. And now I'm getting back to my, my vacation. Peace.